The world often wants to put people into boxes, to sift everyone into categories, rich or poor, successful or not, worth listening to or worth tuning out, right or wrong, male or female. But there are people who are pushing back against those categories, people who believe that life can be richer without harshly drawn lines. For us, it's just about showing up and whatever way you want to show up is right. And you can show up differently every single day because you are whoever you want to be. And that's great. That's Matthew Herman, the founder of Boy Smells, a rapidly expanding queer owned personal product brand that is disrupting the binary by taking apart one of the most gendered luxury items, fragrance. While the items might be luxurious, the path to success was anything but. So how did Matthew and their business partner go from LA fashion trendsetters to helming one of the most recognizable and sought after brands on Instagram? Find out on this episode of The Journey. There are always exciting things happening in the world of small business. The news that grabs the headlines though are always the highlights, the overnight successes, the billion dollar IPOs, the massive exits. But just like your Instagram feed, that's never the whole story. Let's look deeper than the headlines and press photos. Underneath all of that is the real work of building something valuable and lasting. Don't get me wrong, I love crazy success stories and can be drawn in by those big flashy tales just as much as the next person. But we all know that what's more important than the destination is how you get there. It's the struggles you have to overcome and the insights you learn along the way that make you who you are. So those are the stories we're telling. It's raw, it's honest, and maybe it's exactly what you need to hear. I'm Hillary Georgie, and this is The Journey. So, anyone who owns a small business knows what the difference between surviving and thriving feels like. And obviously we all aim to thrive. That's why we're excited about our latest partnership with UPS. Our listeners know that whether you're moving your business online or getting into new markets or just trying to make things run faster and more efficiently, small businesses are up against a unique set of challenges. That's why UPS designed innovative tools just for small businesses that are made to help take you to the next level. Learn more about how UPS can get your small business moving forward at ups.com slash pivot. From the time Matthew was younger, they knew they were drawn to all things fabulous. They would watch TV and see a world of costumes and characters who were uniquely themselves. And Matthew knew one thing, they wanted in. I always love the idea of creating worlds and fantasies and things that felt kind of overtly fabulous, you know? I started watching fashion TV. I was always artistically inclined as a young kid. I always knew I wanted to go into like creative world building. They followed that inclination all the way to London, where Matthew attended St. Martin's, an art school that nurtured the creative talents of Titans, such as Alexander McQueen. While there, they honed their artistic process, loving the freedom they found in the work. The school didn't teach many hard skills, but rather focused on chasing curiosity. The school that I went to, Central St. Martin's, was pretty non-traditional, not super focused on technical skills, but it was really focused on conceptual ideas and how to follow them to their richest point. Being confident that process would lead you to a really great end result that you would have never been able to get there just sitting there and imagining it on your own. It was a skill that would serve Matthew well as they moved back to New York and then traveled to LA, where they began working for notorious fashion brand Nasty Gal. It was a place that encouraged innovation and creativity. It also encouraged something unexpected, a side hustle. That's where Matthew and their business partner, David, started putting their heads together and asking questions that would lead to a million dollar idea. You know, had been talking a lot about as individuals or even men who weren't like shopping at Levi's or these kind of like more rugged, stereotypical masculine stores. When we thought about boy smells, we were like, well, let's start with one thing, candles. As it turned out, they were onto something. With David's background in production and Matthew's penchant for design, 
the two started realizing that there were a lot of people who were seeking the same sort of freedom they were offering. My girlfriends immediately were like, I love this. Because while I'm on one side of the desk at Nasty Gal spraying some floral tulip or rose fragrance, like my best self, pulling on my masculine and feminine and just remixing it to be an individual. All my girlfriends are wearing like Tuscan Leather by Tom Ford or Santal 33. And they're crossing the gender binary with scent and feeling like their best and badass self to go out there and tackle the world. Matthew and David were still just working on their own, making candles as a side gig and giving their wares to friends and family who loved the scents. And Matthew found an unlikely outlet for the message they'd been trying to get out for years. I think about boy smells and what it hopefully means to people or what it means to us. We really want to create, through scent, a world where it's good to explore all aspects of who you want to be. The binary constructs that hold us back don't exist in boy smells and that showing up in your best and baddest and freakiest and most expressive way is something that it should be celebrated and encouraged versus being cautioned and suppressed. As word of mouth grew, they knew they were going to have to make a decision. Keep it as just a hobby or jump in with both feet. They jumped. While both creators were talented and passionate, there was one thing they weren't. Candle makers. They quickly educated themselves, but there was a steep learning curve. We had just homemaking supplies. We'd have these canisters with handles and we would put the wax in it and we put it in like a double boiler using our pots and pans that we cooked in. And then we would slowly melt it. We were buying just fragrances that we could find off the internet. I remember early, early on, it was winter when we first started the company. I think it was January 1st. So all the way through March, it was really cold. And we were making these candles after work when we come home. There were long nights and more than one occasion where the pots and pans used to make candles were mistakenly used to also make pasta, resulting in more than one ruined dinner. But Matthew and David kept at it, and their brand continued to gain momentum. As the brand expanded, they made changes along with it. David left his day job, and Boy Smells took on its first full-time employee, a friend who took a massive pay cut to work for a brand she believed in. At one point, every single wall was covered with wire shelving and inventory, and then we have a desk running in the middle of the living room that was like a packing station, and then we have four computer station desks in the living room, and I thought, this is huge. They were focusing on digital marketing, and it was paying off big time. It seemed that more and more people were recognizing the cute candle with the pink label they saw on Instagram, and Boy Smells was fighting to keep up with demand. But things reached a fever pitch when a huge music star reached out to tell Matthew how much she loved the product. One thing led to another, and... We also had gotten a DM from Casey Musgraves being like, I love your candles, da 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 da. And I was like, oh, cool. Stop by if you're in LA. And she was like, yeah, that'd be so cool. And it just kind of became like a friendly conversation. And that turned into us working on a collaboration together. And we launched that in February 2020. Then, flash forward a month. That flash forward brings us to March 2020. Our creators were knee-deep in pre-orders for an exploding brand with a celebrity partnership. But then the world screeched to a grinding halt. So how did Boy Smells weather the pandemic? How did our entrepreneurs find a way to keep their small business thriving at one of the most uncertain periods in recent history? Find out after the break. Today's podcast is sponsored by UPS. If you're like a lot of our listeners, you've either taken your business online or you want to make that shift fast. Well, UPS makes it easy to ship and save wherever your e-commerce takes you so you can launch your business into a whole new orbit. Whatever platform you're using to host your online store or track and manage your shipping, UPS is already there. You'll get big savings and reliable shipping that give you a competitive edge and keep your customers happy. 
you can ship from your online store to your customer's front door faster than ever when you choose UPS. So get started today at ups.com slash pivot. The orders were in, their inventory all spoken for. Voicemails was on the rise, getting ready to ride the wave of a huge celebrity partnership. Then the world shut down and everything was up in the air. But something unexpected happened. I think from March 12th through 17th, everybody was like, I'm stuck at home. I'm going to need a candle. And I think across the entire beauty and self-care industry, home fragrance really became refocused for the macro consumer in a new and permanent way where all of a sudden having a candle and your home smelling good and taking care of your home became part of taking care of yourself because we were stuck at home. And there was already a trend that the home was becoming an extension of the idea of self with Instagram and people photographing their homes. Between us investing in digital marketing for the first time ever, having this really big hit sellout collab with a really, really famous singer and everybody all of a sudden wanting a candle. This kind of like conflux of crazy events. And despite all the supply chain issues and things like that, our e-commerce grew 1000%. People were home and they wanted comfort and they wanted voicemails candles. The only problem? The supply chains were a mess and shipping costs were through the roof. Matthew and their cohorts could barely keep up with the demand. So they did what all entrepreneurs do. They improvised. It was April and no factory, no way to make anything, nothing. So we got all these extra wax melters. Me and David set up two at the office. We took shifts of people. Overnight, people would pour wax and then In the morning, we would clean the vessels, label them and box them. And then that would go on and people would ship them out. The people who worked at the candle factories who like weren't employed, we were like going to their garages and giving them fold out tables and wax melters. And they were like working from home. Kari, like that first employee that I was talking about earlier, she was driving around in a U-Haul all day, every day through the valley to pick up. 500 units here, pick up 500 units here. We just had this like crazy Excel sheet of different people and who had what since and how many were coming. The hard work paid off. Without huge costs like travel, which was nearly non-existent in 2020, Matthew and David could focus everything on digital marketing, which continued to pay back impressive dividends. I don't know what kind of weird luck we had, but a lot of things happened in the right order that allowed us to be able to fund growth in a year where we weren't spending money on travel, we weren't spending money on out-of-house IRL marketing or events. So we were just spending money on digital marketing and that was it. So we were able to scale the business, but that entire year was just logistically on so many levels, just really crazy. And we're just now getting back into product innovation. We did a lot with candles and we launched fine fragrance, personal fragrance, but we're just getting back into the product pipeline that we had originally set up for ourselves back in 2019. We're just getting back into that now because from 2020 all the way through the end of 2021 was just about growth and trying to figure out how to manage it. Boy Smells is becoming a household name, but Matthew isn't done trying to make lasting change. For them, The brand is just beginning to open up the discussion about identity. And that starts with making sure that there are more seats at the table and more people to contribute to the discussion. Just getting a lot more creative, diversifying, hiring functional experts in operations and logistics, all that kind of stuff that I used to just take care of or David used to take care of because we were the founders and we kind of did everything. Like having to hire into true functional experts We can only take ourselves so far. I would rather there be smarter people in the room than me so that we have the best to get us where we want to go. And Boy Smells is still going full steam ahead. Matthew's vision is to continue to branch out and disrupt different parts of the industry. We've also hired a CEO, which has been really great. I think we will always be 
the seed of what boy smells grows up into being, but we can pass off branches of things to other people. I always said boy smells is whoever is involved in it at that time. And I think I know that from, you know, working in fashion, they'll have like one vibe for a couple of years and then they'll kind of change vibes. And that might be because not the person who's public facing, they haven't changed, but maybe somebody really important under them has changed and they've decided to take the marketing in a different direction, or they've decided to take the textiles in a different direction. I really believe that voice smells is only as strong as who works at it. Somebody new comes in and things feel different at Boy Smells because we have new voices in the room sharing their opinions and contributing to the conversation. And I think that more voices in the room leads to stronger brands and perspectives. The inclusion of more perspectives is good for a brand. Matthew had passion from day one, and they had the courage to follow it wherever it led them, even when that place was unexpected. From London to LA to making candles in front of a space heater in the middle of the night, Matthew followed their dream to free people up to be themselves, whatever that looked like. And that's what we encourage and self-exploration and self-expression. It should be a part of identity and that you should be taught to feel good about that. The Journey is created by Mission.org and sponsored by UPS. To learn more about the show or mission, visit mission.org. And to learn more about how UPS can help your business, visit ups.com slash pivot.